Hello everybody, it's Brian for GadgetUnit.com with part 9 of my sub $300 PC build series and in this video we will be putting all the parts together and turning the computer on. So you could use the motherboard's box as a little workstation and now we will go ahead and install our single DIMM into the appropriate slot which will be the one closest to the CPU socket. So once you open the two ends, just go ahead and put in the dim into the slot, push down until the clips close back into place, and that's how you install memory. It's one of the easiest component installations. And next up, it's time for the processors. So we will be using the Intel G3220. I believe that's going to come onto the screen in a moment, but just lift up the retention bracket, and then your uh, CPU holder will open up, and that will reveal the socket. So here is our G3200. 3220, excuse me. So processors can only be installed one direction. And once you find that, go ahead and drop the processor down into the socket. Close the socket cover. Then the little black CPU cover will go ahead and pop off once you push the retention bracket all the way back down. And there that is. So the processor is installed. And next up is the cooler, which we'll be using the included stock Intel cooler since in my early Prime 95 testing this processor stays very cool which is nice to see. So you just have to line it up with the four holes that surround the CPU socket and push the plastic pins down and they will securely go into place. Next up you can just plug in the fan. That fan header right there is actually for a system fan, just a regular PWM fan connector rather than the one for the dedicated CPU fan header itself which I did off camera. For the case, go ahead and take the I.O. backplate and put it into place and then take your motherboard with everything on it and put that onto the standoffs, which for this particular case, they come pre-installed. Then once you have it lined up, just go ahead and screw everything into place. There are screws in the corners as well as a couple in the middle. So once that is all screwed into place, we'll go ahead and start with a couple of other easy ones. So here we have our hard drive sled toolless. So once you go ahead and open up the sides there, Go ahead and take your three and a half inch drive and slide it into place like so and then take your two ends and close them back up they'll snap securely into place and that will make sure that your hard drive is in the sled just go ahead and slide everything back into the case next up we have our optical disc drive so go ahead and take the front cover off and then take your five and a quarter inch drive slide that in through the front of the case and make sure that the holes on the drive are lined up with the holes within the case and screw it into place. Now off camera, I took the other side panel off and screwed the other two screws into it just so it has more of a secure fit. Next up is our power supply. Just go ahead and drop that down into the case. Then go ahead and screw it into place from the back of the case. And after you do that, it is securely installed. Now is all the cabling, which I did off camera. So despite the power supply being not modular at all, there's still plenty of room left inside, so once you actually take your time with cable management, it's actually pretty tidy, and despite not being modular, like I said, everything is pretty neat here, and I'm pretty happy with how the cable management turned out. And here is everything, sort of a glamour shot. And here's a closer look at all of the internals with a light shining on the inside so you can better see the components. Again, the cable management is pretty good, I'd have to say. There are some of your front panel connections. Now because this motherboard does not have an onboard USB 3 header, the USB 3 front panel cable that usually plugs into the motherboard actually has an extra cable coming off of it that you could still plug into a USB 2 header on the motherboard, so you could still at least use that USB 3 port as a USB 2 port. After pushing the power button, there's your front 120mm intake fan with white LEDs. There's a reset switch on the top right of the case that has red LEDs behind it, which acts as your hard drive indicator. And the power supply fan has blue LEDs on it. And everything works on the first try. You see the rear fan working as well. And that's pretty much it with the build video. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback about this or anything else, feel free to leave those down below in the comments area. But that's it with the video. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll talk to you all very soon.